All right, everybody, welcome to day two of the M365 Philly virtual. Uh, day one started with a little bit of a hiccup, but from the feedback that we got so far, uh, the rest of the session seemed to have gone pretty well. Uh, we do read the feedback, so please be sure to fill them out. Uh, yesterday's keynote session has been made available on our homepage. Uh, there's a couple of links there that you can click on. Um, a few people were asking whether we are recording the sessions. We are recording the sessions and we are going to look into how, we're, how we want to share them. Uh, we will be asking the speakers for their permission to share this, those videos as well. So with that out of the way, uh, we have an impressive lineup today. Um, I'm excited to introduce our second keynote speaker. She's the principal PM manager for Power Platform and the host of Maven's Do It Better podcast. She's produced hundreds of marketing campaigns and events for big name companies in our industry and has supported their business growth by helping them increase brand awareness globally. Our next keynote speaker is Heather Newman. Welcome, Heather. Hello, good morning and good, oh my, I think we're afternoon and uh, good evening in some places as well. We all set and ready to go? I believe so. Okay, okay. cool. All right, can you see everything? Me, the slides and all that stuff? Good to go? Okay, well, uh, Hey everybody, so nice to be here. Um, I have not spoken in Philly before. The last time I was in Philadelphia, I think it was for the AIM conference in the Wayback Machine. So really great to be here and uh, sending shout outs to all the organizers and all of our sponsors, uh, Tri-State Office 365, Soho Dragon and the Tech Platform. So super thrilled to be here. So today uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about building community through storytelling and uh, I wanted to sorry, I'm sort of connecting to John Levesque who was your keynote yesterday. Uh, John is a part of my team and uh, I am newly minted back at Microsoft and uh, as you can see here that is a picture of uh, the together view on teams. Uh, we were working on a project and this is one of our uh, this is our larger team uh, at Microsoft and uh, we popped that on yesterday. I have found that it's really cool to use that view um, potentially when you're starting a meeting. Um, talk about building community and also, you know, building rapport between folks. Turning that on, giving a chance for everybody to say hello to each other is a really, really cool thing to do. And um, I'm implementing that as a best practice in a lot of my meetings. We're not seeing each other as much as we'd like these days, obviously in person. And so we're through the looking glass, if you will, right? So it's kind of nice to see everybody for a minute before you kind of get into the uh, actual meat of whatever it is you're doing. So I highly recommend that together view. So again, my name is Heather Newman. Um, you can find me out on uh, the social media places at Hedda Newman. And uh, we have a newly minted Power Platform official Twitter handle that I'm super excited about. So that is MS Power Plat. So um, go out and give a follow if you like, please. And uh, you'll be seeing lots from our product teams and our community and all of that out there. Um, a lot of people call me Hedda. Um, it's a nickname from college um, and my pronouns are she, her and hers and I am a human in tech like all of you. Um, the reason I get up out of bed in the morning is uh, because I really believe that life is a gift and that my job is to spread joy and connect as many people as humanly possible. Uh, I am a storyteller and so storytelling is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I am a theater major turn tech geek. I went to University of Washington in Seattle many moons ago. Um, so I recently joined Microsoft, like I said, um, after 18 years. So they call that a boomerang sometimes when you boomerang back to a company. Um, I started out in 2001 on the SharePoint marketing team and I am now leading our community team for Power Platform. So John Levesque, uh, Charles Sterling and Brian Dang and I are all part of a team that's also connected to with the good folks over in Power BI, Sandy Rivas, and those folks as well. So we've just joined the Power Cat customer success team too. So you'll know a lot of those faces out there in the world. Um, and I'm super duper excited about this new opportunity. So for me, helping people and our customers connect to tell stories is really what I do and is part of my job. Um, I was a two-time Office Apps and Services Microsoft MVP, so uh, my heart is definitely still over with Teams and SharePoint and OneDrive and all of that, and I'm super excited to really blend and connect those communities even more. It seems to me that a lot of folks that are doing modern workplace work are also in the Power Platform. 
Uh, I do have a podcast called Mavens Do It Better. Uh, I interview extraordinary experts who bring a light to our world. Um, I love doing those. It's a weekly show. They're about 30 minutes and I interview people from every industry all over the place. There's tons of tech, um, music, all kinds of stuff. And it's something that it's a hobby and a passion and that I love to do. Um, I also, you can't see it today because it's kind of a uh, gray outside, which is odd because I live in Marina Del Rey in LA in Los Angeles, California. And for those of you uh, who are from the Midwest, I am from Michigan and I was born in Muskegon and my parents are from Bay City and Elma. So let's get into it. So do we have any Doctor Who fans on the call? Um, I am a recent Doctor Who fan and today I going to back up a little bit and show you that I am wearing a, a Tom Baker scarf. Um, this is not mine. I am borrowing this. Uh, my boyfriend knitted this when he was in high school and he is, in the, is the reason that I have started watching Doctor Who. Uh, I know the reboot happened in 20, 2005 and I'm a bit late to the party, um, but this here is one of my favorite quotes from the series. I'm definitely a David Tennant fan, but Matt is also very lovely. I'm enjoying it super uh, so much. Anyway, um, we are all stories in the end. Just make it a good one. Um, I love that. And I was waiting for that quote to come up, you know, like you hear a quote and uh, kind of out in the ether. And then I was like, I was waiting for it to come up in the episode. And I totally got all misty <laughs> when I finally heard it um, when it came up, which was kind of fun. Um, something interesting about Doctor Who that you might not know is that uh, fans know these things. But um, so in November 1963 was the first Doctor Who. And it was originally intended to be a family educational program. Uh, two of the original main characters were science and history teachers. And so a lot of the early stories were just pure history without any aliens, but aliens seem to catch on. And so we have many, many, many more of those. Um, one thing I think about life is that uh, a friend of mine said this to me. He said, you know, life is a book and your book has different chapters in it. And you can kind of always tell when you're going into a new chapter of your life. You know, you kind of feel that, you know, you're like, oh, this one's kind of done and I'm moving into the next one. Um, the thing is, is that uh, with life being a book, if you want to take that metaphor, that sometimes you have to go back and reread a chapter, um, maybe because you didn't learn the lessons you were supposed to. I think the universe is kind of funny that way sometimes. But I believe that each day is a page in our book that you get to write for yourself, your family, your friends, your customers, your coworkers, and the world and you have the pen and you choose what to write. I'm a big fan of Humans of IT. If all of you um, have not uh, gone out to the Microsoft tech community before, I highly recommend it. Um, go sign in and you can go sign up and be a part of Humans of IT. It's a really great program um, that's run out of the IT Pro uh, product team, product teams out of Microsoft. And it's a great place to find mentors, to share your stories of being a human in IT and also connecting with other folks. So I highly recommend go checking out Humans of IT on the Microsoft tech community. So uh, another friend, a uh, gal that works with me, um, we were talking about what's going on right now in the world. And uh, she said, disruption is the largest harbinger of change. And then I said, what a disruption this crisis is. And we both kind of looked at each other and we're like, yeah, that is the truth. Um, you know, in technology and in the consumer world, um, we've often heard the word disruption and it's it's a good thing. You know, it's like, we're the disruptor. I'm gonna, we're gonna disrupt this industry. You know, um, lots of um, pieces of the gig economy, if you will. And also, you know, all these companies that have one word names um, that have come out in the recent past. You know, I think that the pace of change, I don't think has ever been this fast and I don't think it'll ever be this slow ever again either. Um, and I don't think we've had a disruption like this in our lives, maybe this monumental potentially since the tragedy of 9-11. Um, and we had massive changes to our world happen after that event. Um, the thing about disruption, it brings change, but it also brings up fear and worries and questions in our mind about the uncertainty of our world. You know, in these days, we're all working from home. Um, I 
find that in working from home, I am working more, not less. My meetings are back to back. They have the days bleed together. Um, there's no passing period between them. And I have to work really hard against screen fatigue and also just keeping energy up. And I'm a fairly energetic person, if you know me at all. But I think that's something that's affecting all of us. And um, I think we're tired, you know? Um, we don't know what the day may bring. And that has kind of always been the case. You never know what life in the day is going to bring you, but obviously it's more pronounced with this virus looming around us. So the above, I wrote down these things that are kind of have been going through my head for the last few months. Um, I don't know if any of these resonate with you, but um, I think the biggest story that we tell is actually the one that we tell ourselves. It's the one that runs through our heads on a daily basis and a moment by moment basis. You know, even though you're wonderfully paying attention and listening to me right now, you have things running through your mind that you may need to do, things that you're worried about, things that um, keep you up at night, unfortunately, right? So no matter what we're doing, you kind of never know what's behind somebody's smiling eyes. I say that a lot because I think right now we need to really give each other some levity and some credit and just a break as well, you know? Um, and I think that one of the things that I do a lot is try and distill that narrative. And it's something that I call the fear narrative. And these are those questions and thoughts that are compounded and combined and repeated where we become consumed with that worry and stress. And this is not the story that we wanna be telling ourselves or anyone else. The thing about the fear narrative is our brains love to put this on that heavy repeat rotation. It's kind of like that, you know, one hit wonder song that plays on the radio over and over, an earworm. I won't say one because I don't want to do that to you, but you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, I think that the, the fear narrative is one of those things that it's everybody has it as well. You know, people are like, oh, I'm not afraid of anything and all of that. You know, it, it doesn't have to be in that way. It's more of just anytime you make a choice to maybe not do something or that impulse to pull back or the impulse to, you know, not say what you feel um, or not potentially take that step to build that new app or to create that new marketing campaign. All of those things where we hesitate, to me, that is the fear narrative running in our heads. Now, the thing is, is the fear narrative is in our brains. It's from our brains being gazillion years old and it's that fight or flight reaction to things that put us in danger. And that story when we run it can help us feel unfortunately unproductive and disconnected and to feel alone. And in this world that we're in where we're looking through panes of glass at each other, it's even more important than it used to be on taking out this fear narrative. You know, um, the lizard brain, uh, you've probably heard about this. Um, lots of people talk about it. I've talked about it before. You know, the, the lizard brain really kind of craves energy and it loves worry. Um, it, keeps, it keeps our adrenaline pumping and it's all these chemicals in our body and our brains that kind of crave uh, a little bit of um, ping, right? So the fear narrative really kind of requires fuel, unfortunately, and lots of it. You know, it's that it's that brunch you have where you kind of eat all the foods, right? And, and that giant meal tastes really good, but then when you're done, you kind of have a stomach ache. That's kind of the lizard brain, right? Um, you get sluggish and you get overwhelmed. And so stress and worry are really that fear narrative's fuel. Um, and you think, you know, humans, we like control and consistency. Um, and it's kind of the, if you've ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of need, you know, our, our basic needs are those physiological needs of, you know, having a place to live, having air to breathe, having food, having something to drink, all of that stuff. And right now, a lot of the time, you know, we're looking at, you know, am I going to have a business? Um, where's my job? How am I doing? How is my family? Where's you know, how are my people in my life doing, right? And so the loss of control and what is normal, I don't like that word, but is really at that epic peak, you know? Um, our fears are at any time things that could happen, 
Not usually though what is happening in the moment, although a lot of things are happening in the moment right now. Um, but this is that worry and that fearful thinking. Um, and so here's the thing, when something does happen, when something goes awry, we go into action and we face the moment, you know? There's worrying about something that may or may not happen. And then there's the actual moment where something does happen, good or bad, we take action, right? Um, and if any of the terrible things in our lives that we have running through our brains would happen, we would deal with them because that is what we do. Um, but when we're running this fear narrative and listening to our lizard brain, you know, we're not helping anyone else. Um, and we're putting a story out there for ourselves that is about and can take us into depression, disappointment and disease. Stress and worry make us sick, you know. And so I feel like the stories that we tell um, to ourselves are just as important as the stories we tell outwardly in the world. And building community is all about sharing stories and connecting with each other. It's the reason you're here today listening to this. You came to learn, you came to connect, you came to go deeper in something that you're passionate about. But when we're not taking care of ourselves, we can't do that. We can't tell our best stories when we're not taking care of ourselves. A lot of people talk about self-care and I'm going to as well. I think it's very important. And uh, I always quote RuPaul, the very famous uh, drag queen, who says, um, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anyone else? And love doesn't necessarily mean that relationship love. It's self-love as well and loving the world. And by taking care of yourself, it's a gift that you give other people as well. And it has the capability for you to tell your best stories. So here's another one that I don't like. And uh, I think we all have it to some degree. It's imposter syndrome. And this one stops many of us without us even realizing. You know, you know I've, I've gone to people and we've ta I've talked about this before and they've said, I don't have imposter syndrome. I don't feel like a fraud. But again, it's any time that we doubt ourselves, this is imposter syndrome creeping up. And so it can be small or it can be grand. Um, when we choose not to speak up, um, right now there's a lot of speaking up that's happening in the world. And I think it's about how we choose to show up in the world and what words we use to show up in the world. That's all part of our narrative and part of our story. Um, sometimes when we maybe choose an easier path, sometimes it's a good path because it's easier. But sometimes choices are about doing things outside your comfort zone, right? And for some people, you know, attending an event, when we would attend, you know, in-person events, for some people that's really difficult, you know? Um, people who are introverts um, and they would, I've had so many people come up to me and say, you know, oh, I, I wanted to, wanted to say hello, but I, and I was like, why not? You know, and I'm obviously an extrovert, but, you know, I think that these days when we're connecting with each other through panes of glass, it might be a little bit easier for that. But, you know, it's, it's that moment when you think about, should I do something or should I take that next step? Um, and then you doubt yourself. That's imposter syndrome. And it's something that holds us back from telling our best stories and from connecting to each other and creating community. So I was thinking about, say a year from now, you know, what am I gonna ask myself? Um, and I wrote these down and I thought, you know, this stress and worry that we're talking about I want to make sure and get rid of that. And I want to help you get rid of it too. And I feel like right now it's time to take stock. And I might, it might be my age, you know, um, I would call myself in my middle age. Um, I just had a birthday uh, last week. And so I, I'm squarely in my middle age. And so I think there's something about that that also um, you start looking at thinking about purpose and you think about, you know, what is my story? What has been my story? And what do I not want to be my story anymore? The old story that I sometimes get back into the groove into, you know? Um, and so I feel like some of these questions were about me thinking about where do I want to be in a year from now, right? And I think that we don't always look to the future and especially when our future is wiggly and there's so many things that we don't know. But at the same time, I think grounding ourselves in asking these questions is really important. Um, I think when, you know, the 
And I want to say that when this crisis is over, that's what I want to say. And hopefully it will end um, sooner or later. We will have solutions for it. Um, and we've gone through this. A lot of people have called this a slowing down, um, uh, the great pause. Um, and I think that, you know, I am i don't know about you, but I've rearranged my closets. You know, I'm eating more brownies than I should, unfortunately. Um, but I am working constantly on what I want my story to be. And I think this time of sort of staying put, we're really discovering new ways of working obviously you know we're, we're discovering new ways of relating to each other of loving each other of parenting of teaching um, and also looking at our differences and how we move and shake in the world um, this breakneck pace that we've all become accustomed to i think has changed a little bit and i think it can change if we want it to you know i said i'm working more than i have in a long time that is true the thing is, is that it's up to each one of us to have our story be one of also wellness and taking care of ourselves. And that's the thing. Uh, I've seen a lot of folks, you may have seen uh, one of the articles that came out recently from Microsoft talking about the statistics on how much people are working right now and uh, what what the, you know, the time on that can be sort of sort of tracked with everything. And one of the things that I've been working on instituting with my team is a no meeting Friday. Um, Friday is a day to, to, to work, right? Um, and no meetings. And uh, it's something that I think a lot of people are thinking about. Also, um, looking at your calendar and saying, you know what, we're going to do 20 minute meetings. We're going to do like a TED talk kind of thing. You know, do we really need an hour or even a half hour for something? Starting meetings on the 05, on the 15 instead of right at the top. So everybody has a moment to get a wonderful cup of coffee or go to the bathroom or all the things that we need to do in between to have a moment. Being able to tell a good story and to connect with people and to be creative. Um, I write a lot. I write a lot for myself and I write a lot for other people. And to me, I can't do my best work writing, creating stories until I have a moment to let my mind go, to take a walk outside for a second, um, to listen to meditation, all those kinds of things. And so it's one of those things where I feel like some of the trickery of using the technology that we have for our benefit is really, really important. So think about that the next time you schedule a meeting with somebody, you know, are you allowing enough time with the people in your um, your employees, your the, the people on your teams to have time to actually create, to make the stories that you want to be telling to your customers and to your partners and also then to your families as well. So I was just talking about the fear narrative and how bad it is. So the thing is, though, and this is a quote from Doctor Who. Fear is a superpower. Um, it can make you faster, cleverer, and stronger. Um, it doesn't have to make you cruel or cowardly. It can make you kind. Um, the thing is, is the fear narrative that I was talking about, the only way we combat it is by recognizing it and learning from it because it also creates empathy. Empathy, as you all know, is being able to walk in someone else's shoes and, and feeling that you can walk in someone else's shoes to understand their story. I was a theater major, like I said, and so empathy is all about theater and theater is all about empathy. When I am on stage and I am portraying a character and you are viewing me portray a character, you are watching another human being portray a person on stage to share that story, right? And when you take that story in, you can see what it's like to be that person. That's why we love entertainment. Live theater to me is one of the best things in the entire world and I can't wait till we get back to being able to do that together. But it's the same thing with movies or books. When we read about someone's story, we understand them. We feel empathetic to them. And it also sparks bravery and vulnerability in us to share our stories with each other. And that sharing of stories connects us. It builds connective tissue that really builds that community between us. So using your fear to share your story is something that I really believe highly in for each one of us. So how did you start your day? I'm curious about how you started your day and what you did to get in there. And one of the things that I'm looking at is thinking about, well, 
I started my day, I got up, I made sure this was working. <laughs> I had a cup of coffee. I wrote in my gratitude journal and I then got ready. Um, I didn't do some of the things that I normally do. I didn't meditate, I didn't read, I didn't journal. I think being able to tell our best stories is something that we need to think about that self-care um, and really connecting with people. Um, starting our day well is super duper important. Now, these are usually my morning rituals. A little bit of exercise, some meditation, some reading, some journaling. And that gets back to that creativity piece of being able to have that moment of being able to be creative. If you don't have a morning ritual, and there's a gazillion things written about this, so you can go out anywhere and, and see, you know, the top five ways to, you know, start your morning or why to get up at 530 in the morning. I do believe that there's something to ritual that grounds us. And it also kind of helps us get that fear narrative. We get that exercise going, it gets blood pumping into our brain. Meditation connects us to the universe. Reading gets us taking something in that's amazing by somebody. It could just be a blog or a book that you read that you, you're reading over time. And then journaling, putting pen to page, putting your thoughts down. I love a gratitude journal. So being grateful for what you have and writing it down, there's nothing like it. So those are my four. Think about how you start your day because how you start your day is really important. So storytelling, um, to me, the way we best work with ourselves and our families is by talking to each other. You know, um, I know there's not, a, you know, in a regular Teams call, not a live event, you know, there's chit chat happening. And every time you share something in a chat, you are sharing your story with someone and you're connecting to them and you're telling them a little bit about who you are. So what you say, every word that you tell someone about you um, is a story and also, I said this to someone on my team. I said, he was like, oh, I don't want to fill out this form. Ah, And I said, you know what? Think about it like you're telling a story, you know, because it is a story that you're telling, especially when you want something from somebody else and you need to fill out a form to do it. Um, your personal brand also tells a story and the homepage of your website tells a story as well. So if you've never done a Pecha Kucha, this is new to me. Holy cats, it's so good. This is a huge way to build community in your company, to build community, even, even with your family. I think it's something that's super cool. Pecha Kucha um, means chit chat in Japanese, and it is a storytelling format where you get about 20 seconds, you get 20 slides and 20 sec seconds of commentary for each. So 400, uh, 400 seconds to tell your story and no words just pictures. It's visual storytelling that celebrates humanity. I got to tell you, it was one of the coolest things that I have ever gone through. We did it um, as a team recently, and it is amazing what you learn about people. If people know your story, they are more likely to work with you in a better way. So building community inside your teams, starting with yourself, that self-care, and reverberating out It'll be super interesting for you to maybe potentially do this. There's a site, petrakucha.com. You can get templates. But for example, this tells you a little bit about me. I like to hike. I live by the beach. I love ramen. And I like a sunset. That's me when I was a kid. Now you can see, I put a timer down here. I'm not going to do the full 20 seconds, but um, I grew up in the Midwest. I was a Girl Scout and a Brownie, and I went to the University of Washington. These are some examples of a few slides from my Pechacucha. I think that it's super important to connect with each other as humans while we're doing this great tech stuff. You know, you're going to have amazing, wonderful technology talks today, right? Where you're going to learn and you're going to go deeper in all of these subjects that you know and love. But the other piece of this is how we connect with humans, saying thank you and telling the stories of how we're building these things. You know, it's not just necessarily about all the code and all of that. But when we see things that inspire or ignite, what are we drawn to? We're drawn to those videos that are in Satya's keynotes. We're drawn to the stories of people, the case studies, all of that stuff. And telling a good story is about opening a story loop. So story loops drive our brains to want to seek out some sort of conclusion. This is a very traditional uh, storytelling arc. Um, this is from a really great uh, Medium article that I'll put up later on Twitter if you want to grab it. But the art of and power of storytelling in UX. It's the same in a book. It's the same on your website. It's the same when you put together a presentation. So look at this. 
if I and I didn't pick on anybody because I wasn't going to do that. But if I go to a website, your website, your company's website, and it says your managed services and solution provider for power platform. All right, that really doesn't tell me a whole lot about you and what you do and what you care about, does it? This one. Empower your teams to create apps and automation that solves business problems. OK, tell me more. What you want with any story you're telling about your products, about your services, about yourself is tell me more. It's the same thing when you're trying to build community, sharing stories about yourselves and what you're doing and how you're doing it gets people excited and it opens up that story loop of the tell me more. So those of us in technology, we need both things, right? We need the deep how to's, we need the best practices. We're all upskilling as makers and creators, um, upskilling our digital literacy of ourselves, of the people in our, um, uh, our customers and our partners, um, but also connecting those stories to what we do every day. When we blend together and share them, that is what makes our community stronger, that makes our businesses stronger. I love a healthy workplace. Um, I say that and I, 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 I'm smiling because people don't necessarily think about that. What does a healthy workplace look like? Do you have plans for when things go awry? Do you promote other people's goodness? How do you share inside and internally with each other about who you are? I mean, you go to work every day. Do you actually know the people that you sit that you sit next to? You know, right here, right now, you know, you decided to come here today to learn and connect and you go to user groups for the same reason. And the thing is, is when we share our personal stories, our triumphs and our fears and say, I don't know how to do this. And we ask somebody else for help, we grow. And then we share that out with each other. That is what builds community. You know, if you want someone to buy your services or your products, um, you have to put yourself as the guide and let them be the hero. It's that traditional story arc of you who are selling services and products and creating things. You are a guide. Each one of you who are listening to this right now, you are a guide and a leader for someone, probably for many people in your life, both in your family and in your businesses and in your community, right? The heroes are the folks that you help and sharing a story with someone gets them to tell their hero story as well. I saw this, I think it was yesterday. Many of you probably know Sonia Cuff, uh, Cloud Advocate. She's amazing. She's down in down on that. And I don't know if she saw this quote or if she just wrote it, if it was part of Inspire or not. But she said, Microsoft doesn't make magic happen. Our customers make it happen using the technologies we provide. And our partners lead the way by showing those customers what's possible and helping those capabilities come to life. The key word there to me is showing. Um, that's showing, sharing stories. It's all the same thing, right? So we are the magic makers. You are the magic makers, you know? I've been part of the community a long time, so I feel like I was still part of the community. So, but you are the magic makers, you know? Like we have to tell our stories and all of that gets us thinking and innovating new ways to do things, how to automate, how to create better processes, how to have those healthy workplaces that are so very important for us to feel good about doing this every day in and out with a pandemic happening, right? These are some of the hashtags um, coming into the Power Platform team new from um, from uh, from being a part of you know the SharePoint team for such a long time. That community is so strong. It's been so strong. This is your community, and now I'm connecting those communities. And the hashtag that stood out to me was "We rise by lifting up others." You know, I was like, heck yes so excited and pulling out other ones you know sharing is caring community rocks tell your story um it's truly is this is a community you belong to it and your story belongs here and i feel like if we work on our storytelling and work on our self-care then we're just going to be able to connect more and it's also scalability in the long run if you're talking about a business as well right so we rise by lifting up others and one last thought this is another Doctor Who quote. Um, this one was interesting to me because it's a little ethereal, but you know, um, I think it really kind of connects to today where 
There's worlds where the sky is burning, the sea's asleep, the rivers dream, people made of smoke and cities made of song. There's a lot of things going on in our world today where we're kind of scratching our heads. Um, and I feel like the ways that we get through it together is that we've got work to do. And we each have work to do on building our communities, on sharing our stories and connecting each other in those stronger connected tissue ways. And it starts a lot of the times with just one thing, telling one person something about you that they didn't know, you know? That's a story and you get to write it every day. You have the pen in your hand and the paper on your desk and I invite you to tell your stories because it will connect you to this technology world more than you will ever realize. And a lot of you know that already, but I'm just saying it again, do it because it's awesome. So everybody, thank you so much. May you be happy and may you be healthy. And I appreciate the time today. And if anybody has any questions, let her rip. Thanks a lot. So right now we have uh, no questions just yet, but we have one uh, person, I believe the name is uh, Bissy. It says, uh -huh. Tom Bell was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, Chrissy. Yay. Oh. Awesome. And then a happy birthday in there. Yeah, wonderful. All good. Well, cool. I will, um, I promise I will do some posting of some quotes and things out that I put up um, and things that I referenced as well out on Twitter. So if you want to see those later, I will do that. So yeah, I appreciate the time, y'all. Yay. All right. So <laughs> the next would be uh, the one o'clock session. So unless anybody has any questions, um, our four tracks of questions will begin at the top of the hour. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have Thank a wonderful you. day. You have great speakers. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tom. Bye.